Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got two questions today about this dude. The old tail wheel on your brush hog. First one comes from TC. And TC says, what is the best way to travel from place to place on the farm while the brush hog is attached? Wheel touching the ground or elevated? Thanks. But before I answer that, I want to show question number two from another YouTuber who did it the wrong way. Let's watch this. Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com and Tractor Mike Q&A. Today I'm in my brush hog enclose and I'm going to take a question from Mike in Missouri. And he writes, Tractor Mike, I do a YouTube channel helping tractor people and I have a problem. I was brush hogging tonight trying to get done and I look back and what's wrong with this picture? The tail wheel's gone. And it didn't fall out, it broke off. And the good news is, Dr. Mike practiced what he preaches, it's got plenty of grease on it, but it just broke off. And pretty clean break. I think it probably broke off because of impact. Um, I usually keep my brush hog off the ground well, a couple of inches when I'm in transport mode and, and as the front wheels of the tractor go up and down it bounces and I probably bounced over an uneven piece of ground and when the wheel came down something I had to give and it broke it off. So what am I going to do to fix it? Well first got to go find the wheel. Let's go out in the pasture. We've had lots of rain this year and I got out this afternoon about oh probably four o'clock and started brush hogging. And uh, well, the pasture looks nice. But we're going to go out and try to find the uh, tail wheel, and I'll show you my pasture. Trying something a little bit different this year. Uh, my wife and I kind of have a, a friendly argument going about which is more important, uh, grazing land for horses or the wildfire, wildflower sanctuary that I have in the pasture. And uh, I'm a big believer. I, gr I grew up on an orchard. And of course we were real cognizant of whether or not we had enough bees working at any one given time. And, and habitat for bees is a big problem. There's not enough um, pollinators uh, around. And the reason there's not enough pollinators, we're brush hogging the, the ground and not leaving enough food for them. So I'm going to show you what I did this year, a little different, that I think will, will be okay for the, make a, a feed for the horses and, uh, and feed for the bees as well. Uh, what I did is identified some of the plants that are, make good food for, for bees and I, I left them, brush hogged around them and it takes a little bit of work. Hang on while I crawl through the gate or the fence here. It, it makes it take a little longer but it, it sure uh, helps your tractor driving skills to, to get where you can go around stuff. And what I did is just, I, I, I know most of the native plants and I just picked out clumps of them and and uh, left them. Like right here is a big brush hog area, but right here, this is called bergamot or bee balm. Monarda is another name. It's in the mint family. It has a real fragrant uh, aroma to it. The uh, Native Americans used it for medicine. But that, that's getting ready to bloom. It's, it's got uh, buds on the top of it, and that'll bloom and give, give it. It's called bee balm for a reason. The bees will just be all over it. So I've gone out in my pasture, and I'll show you a picture of it here. And while I'm walking, I'm looking for my tail wheel. I, I, I wouldn't think it'd be too hard to find. Uh, not very many days away from blackberries. Here's my blackberries. They're green right now, but they'll be ripe here in a couple weeks. And we'll have fresh blackberries. And it's thundering again. We've had lots and lots of rain this year. So just to show you my pasture, you can see I've got clumps of plants. I've left uh, oh, some there. I, I, I never brush hog down milkweed. It's, it's the one with the orange head. I've left some daisies and um, some uh, oh, red flowers that bloom in the ironweed. And uh, actually um, it's not, not that bad for uh, allergies, but uh, goldenrod is, is good for wildlife. And there's a clump over there. Let's just walk over and I'll kind of show you what I do. And my goal with brush hogging is to kind of eliminate some of the woody plants. And over the years I've done that. 
but I also like to leave a little bit for the wildlife too. And that's a that's a clump here. That's got a variety of uh, different plants in it that the wildlife will enjoy. And there's what milkweed looks like. It's a it's where the monarch butterflies uh, lay their eggs. So it's important not to bush hog that down. And so you see, this is just just done. That's my field. And you can see the clumps I've left as the sun goes down. And some people may think that's ugly and it needs to be cleaned up, but I think I think it looks just fine. It looks a lot better than it did and gives a little food for the wildlife. Okay, you can see the terrain and how hilly the place I live is. Bottom of that draw right there is probably well, a good 20 foot lower than I am now, maybe more, and it goes down pretty quickly. And a lot of us that buy property in the country, you know, the farmers get the good ground and we get hills and uh, some of us pretty steep hills, the unfarmable ground. So if you're a, somebody that watches my channel a lot, you probably get the same situation. I had to, I left, I found a redbud tree growing. It was just a little tree when I first brush hogged around it. And here's another one. Uh, deer really like redbud trees, and I must have some real active deer because they've really done a number on this one. But anyway, I've left a bunch of daisies, and uh, I brush hogged several down, but I tried to get get the woody plants down, and I think it looks kind of pretty. Looks like nature intended it that way, but I am not seeing a tail wheel. You'd think a tail wheel would be pretty easy to see. What I'm going to do is, is clean the, uh, the shaft up that the tail wheel broke off of and take it to somebody that's a belder, better welder than me and have them weld that sucker back together. <laughs> that won't cost hardly anything and it'll be cheaper than buying a new tail wheel. This was uh, kind of the last area I, I made it through here and then did a little bit in a, down in the valley. Well, yeah, I got a little tour of my place. I've probably got another oh, eight acres to brush hog. That won't take too awful long. It's just going around around a circle. Not many trees in there. You see, there's there's the valley. There's a rabbit, a little bunny rabbit right up there. This was the last place I was. Let's see if we can find it. I bet you I, I would have seen it being gone when I brush hogged under this tree probably now that I think about it so I bet we're gonna find it up here somewhere this is the last place of brush hogged and bullfrogs are active tonight this is our pond it used to not hold water but we finally horses have stood in it long enough that we've got it to hold water in it it's run over a time or two this year. Oh, looky there. Right in front of me is a tail wheel off a Bush Hog SQ720. Broke right off. There's a... On the edge of my pond where I drive to... Uh, take my tractor to the barn which is right there there's a few bumps and I probably just bounced up and down a little bit too much and there's what happened I took the two pieces of my tail wheel to a buddy who's an excellent welder he fixed it up as good as new it won't break there again three takeaways from today's video number one to answer your question TC if you're gonna go across your farm on rough ground leave the tail wheel in one of two places either all the way up so it never touches the ground or let it all the way down let it go over the contours of the ground and uh, you won't have a problem do not do what i do which was have it a little bit off the ground so it's bouncing up and down that's bad i learned something i won't do that again number two if you're going to raise your brush hog all the way up come up slow the first time and watch to make sure the deck of the brush hog doesn't get into the PTO shaft of the brush hog. On some tractor brush hog combinations, the deck can come up and the angle is just right that the PTO shaft can come into that, depending on how you have that set up, and you don't want that. That'll end badly. And number three, if you're gonna work on one of these tail wheels, 
it'd be good to get a roll pin punch kit like this one. I ordered this one just as soon as I saw I'd broken my tail wheel. And I'll put a link down below where you can get this off my Amazon affiliate page if you'd like to. Uh, when you're taking a roll pin out and most of these tail wheels are held on with a roll pin, if you just bang against it with a hammer, you'll make this end bigger and you don't want that. These roll pin punches have a tapered end and that's perfect for getting the roll pin out. So if you're going to work on anything with a roll pin, get these punches and uh, it'll be a lot easier. And finally today, if you've got a few wildflowers in your pasture, don't brush hog them down. Leave them for the critters. They'll thank you later. Appreciate you watching my videos. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be honored. Click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for the tractor enthusiast that help support my channel. And here's another video you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.